with your upgrade to Cora 2111 coming up, you may be wondering about the changes and new features that arrived in Cora versions 2105 and 2111. So today I want to show you a few of those changes related to OPAC and searching. I want to focus on searching first, and I'm going to start with a new search limit library system preference. Let me show you what it does. So first of all, I'm going to go into my system in administration to uh, actually check what is it currently set as. So it's about just typing the name of the preference, which is search limit library. And there it is. So it explains that when I do a search and I limit um, by a branch, um, it's currently going to use the items holding library to display the results. So let's see how that works when I actually run a search. So as I said, I want to do a search when I'm already filtering by branch. So I'm going to type some keywords here and then choose my library. So I want to see results for Riverside Library. And here I have two results. Um, as I said, that system preference is currently set to the items holding library. So it's showing me the three musketeers, which is currently held at Riverside Library. Um, and that's actually its permanent library as well. And it's also showing me uh, 20 years after. Uh, let's double check that one. So Riverside is its current library. So it's holding library, but it actually belongs to Centerville Library. So it's on its way from Riverside back to Centerville. So now if I uh, see the other options in my system preference, I can change this to show me results where the library I set in the search parameter is actually the home library, mm -hmm. or I can select the option where it's going to look in both of those. So either the home library or the holding library. So I'm going to change my preference to home library and holding library and save here. And when I go back to my search and run the same search again, so I'm looking for the three musketeers at Riverside Library. And I have three results. So I still have the two I had before. So the three musketeers at Riverside, which is uh, both the holding and um, home branch because it's currently there as well as um, belongs there. I still have my 20 years after my third results, whereas the one where on its way from Riverside um, to Centerville. But I also now have a third result, which is actually a volume that combines both the three musketeers and 20 years after. And this one is showing as Fairfield. So if I just have a quick look in there, this one is currently at Fairfield. So it's holding library is Fairfield, which is why it didn't appear in my previous search. But because it does belong to Riverside, its home library is Riverside, and it's on its way back from Fairfield to Riverside, this now appears in my result. So this system preference didn't exist in previous versions, and it now um, gives the preference to you as to what you would rather see in the staff interface and uh, for your users on the OPAC in terms of what happens when they search by library. Uh, over changes in 2105 and 2111, um, if you are using Elasticsearch for your search engine, then there are uh, several improvements to how that works. So this one that I've mentioned relates to how the subfields and um, part types, sorry, subtitles and part titles are indexed um, in the search. I'm not going to go into the details. You can uh, go to Buxilla and uh, look for this number to get the full uh, explanations of that one. The other system preference that's new and I wanted to tell you about is called OPAC Hidden Items Heights Records. So let's go and have a look at this one in our system preferences. So this time I am searching for OPAC Hidden Items Heights Records. And it's currently set to hide the bibliographic record when all its items are hidden by this other system preference called OPAC hidden items. Let's go and have a look at that one. This one is the one that says, um, so define some rules. And uh, so it, the rules I've got defined here is if my shelving location uh, is the staff office, then those items will not appear on the OPAC at all. 
And what this new system preference here does is if um, it lets you choose whether you still want the bibliographic record to um, appear on your OPAC, even if the items are hidden. So in previous versions, if there were no items to display um, because they are hidden by OPAC hidden items, the bibliographic record was hidden as well, which is the default here. But now you can choose to still display that record. So let's have a look at how it works. I'm going to switch to the OPAC here. And this time I'm going to look for the handbook of textile fibers. So I'm looking on the OPAC and there's nothing there. If I check it on my staff interface, let's go back to my search here. So it does exist. It does exist, but this has that shelving location of staff office, which I just so showed you is actually hidden on the OPAC using the OPAC hidden item system preference. So if I do still want uh, the bibliographic record to appear on the OPAC, um, even though the item is hidden, then I can change um, this OPAC hidden items hides records system preference. So I can just switch it to don't hide, save my preferences. And then when I run my search again, then that record does appear. So there are still no items showing because they're hidden by OPAC hidden items, but the bibliographic record is now available to you, which could be useful in some cases in your library. When you upgrade to Cora 2111, you will notice a lot of changes to uh, the tools module. Um, there are some changing in news, and some of them are moving to a new section called HTML customizations. Um, you shouldn't be intimidated by the name. Um, it looks just like news, but it allows you to customize other areas of your pack uh, that usually used to be actually configured in some system preferences. So one of the uh, newer ones to move to this section are the OPAC nav bottom and OPAC nav system preferences. So that's your navigation areas on the OPAC. And now you can uh, actually set them up just like you would have done with a news item. I'm going to show you that in a minute. There's also a new um, area called OPAC suggestion instructions within those HTML customizations. And finally, some more options on which libraries to display on the libraries page on the OPAC. So let's switch to the staff interface to have a look at that tools module. So you are probably familiar with the new section. So that's the one where you can uh, create news items for either the librarian interface. So here on this system, I've got a welcome to Koha and a what's next. Um, items and they display on the home page, uh, you know, those boxes on the side when you log in. And through news, you can uh, also create news items for the OPAC, which you might have used to relay information on or put a welcome message on your OPAC homepage. So you still have those options there. But now when you switch to HTML customization, so there's a handy link straight from news, or you can go back to the tools module, you actually have uh, other places where you can uh, customize the text uh, in the same way as you would have done in news. So the one I've got already set up on here is the OPAC header. So if I actually have a quick look at my OPAC, in my OPAC header, all I have is a title uh, which is actually hyperlinked. So if I edit my OPAC header here, I can see that smiling there and I can and make my changes. If I create a new entry, let's have a look at all the options. So there's my OPAC nav right, so the, the navigation section that I mentioned before, um, the OPAC header that I've got already. Um, my OPAC main user block is there. I can also create custom text for the OPAC login instruction. So uh, to help users um, if they need additional information at that point when they log into their account. And the new one is this OPAC suggestion instructions. And that applies if you have purchase suggestions enabled on the OPAC. Um, 
and that will allow you to actually add, add a message at the top of that page to uh, guide users on how the process works. And I, you can obviously um, also have several instructions depending on which uh, library the users that are logged in um, belong to. So if the process for purchase suggestion is slightly different at Fairfield Library, say, and at uh, Liberty Library, then we could have two of those entries set up so that um, when users at uh, Liberty Library are logged in and make a purchase suggestion, they have the information that's most relevant for them. Uh, just as a quick example, I'm going to add an entry for the OPAC main user block. So I could also use the publication and expiration date, again, just like the news entry. I'm going to add a title so it's easier when I uh, look at the list of items I've got uh, through this very uh, HTML customization screen, which one's which. And then I have my message here. So as I said, uh, it's much easier because you have all the formatting options. So uh, I could easily create and form a paragraph. I could add uh, hyperlinks and images, or just make this one a header. And when I save here, it appears on my list, and I can just refresh my catalog to see that message appear in my menu user block. So as I said, just a much easier way to control and customize all the different elements users see on the OPAC. So the other um, slightly new feature is, um, so that libraries page here isn't actually new to 2111. Uh, you're probably on a version that has that libraries page already. And what it does is it uses the information from the administration uh, libraries configuration and it uses that to populate this list. What is new is that you can pick which of your libraries actually display on that list much easily now. So for example, here I've got that old main library that doesn't belong there because uh, actually it's not open to the public. So I, I would rather remove it. And to do that, I can simply go to the administration module in the section for libraries. And when I edit my old main library here, Right at the bottom, I have this new option to say public yes or no. So when it's yes, it is showing, and when it's no, obviously it's hidden. So let's uh, check that. So I've changed that now to no. And when I refresh my page, I'm going straight from my music library to Pleasant Library. So it, it is a sign my own main library is hidden. So we may have um, made changes for you on Koha before. Maybe we've hidden that library's page completely um, for you. So in which, and if you want to use it now, just let us know. Or if we've um, hidden using uh, either CSS or uh, jQuery other elements and you would like to use this page now, again, just contact us and we'll help you um, make the most of that page as well. There are improvements to what the library member when they uh, log in to the OPAC, what they see and how they, uh, what they can do as well. So these changes are coming in 2105 and 2111. And the first one I'm going to show you just in a second uh, relates to item level hold. So if you have um, allowed item level holds in your circulation rules, then um, even if a patron had placed an item level hold, they were seeing exactly the same thing in their hold as if it was a title hold. Um, so that's uh, they are now a bit more detailed. If um, you allowed patrons to link their account, for example, as a family, um, there used to be um, a section to see their relatives fine it's uh, just been renamed to relatives charges. And finally, uh, if you have enabled the um, search history on the OPAC, which uh, saves um, the patron search history when they are logged in and they can um, go and have a look at it afterwards. So there's now a search box on that. So I'll just show you those changes. So the item level holds one in the search history search box. So I am logged into my accounts and I can see my um, titles on loan. And if I switch to my holds, so the first one is a title level hold, but the second one is an item level one. So what's new is that I now know which item 
I've actually placed a hold on. So it clearly shows it's this one. So that, that's what's new. It's just a, an improvement on what library members see. So the other change, as I said, is related to the search history. So I can access my search history here or through the tab on the side. And then I have this search box. So if I know I've uh, done this search before and it's much quicker for me to just find it again rather than uh, entering my parameters again, I can just use that search box and then I can just click on the link and run my search again. <clears throat> 